Whether you need to hang a simple picture frame or a floating shelf, you may find yourself saying, there's got to be a better way to do this. And you are absolutely right. I'm Shannon, and in this episode of The Beginner's Guide, these beginner DIY tips and tricks will show you how simple displaying some of your favorite things in your home will be, one step at a time. Welcome to The Beginner's Guide with Ryobi. Before we get into it, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you're the first to hear a new product announcement, project ideas, DIY tips, and so much more. No matter what shape your walls are in, they may not be quite ready to start hanging or displaying some of your personal decor. And maybe that's because you've got a strip screw left behind. That's why it's important to have the Ryobi screw extractor on hand, and here's how that works. First, you fill the strip screw head with oil or something like WD-40 is perfect for this. Then use a twist bit to drill a hole into the stripped area of the screw. Next, hammer the appropriate size extractor into the hole you drilled. You want it to go far enough that it holds on for this next step. Lastly, use a wrench to grab a hold of the extractor and remove it by twisting counterclockwise until your screw is fully removed. You'll most likely find some sort of imperfection, whether it's a small nail hole, a dent, a nail pop, or any leftover hardware mounted in the wall. And these little cosmetic things are easy to fix, beginning with some simple ways to remove a leftover anchor. Anchors have a strong connection to the wall because, well, they're anchored into the material and they're meant to have a strong hold, so removal can certainly cause a lot of damage to your wall. Your first instinct might be to just pull it straight back out, and while you can do that, it's helpful to consider how the anchor was originally installed. The anchor is set inside the wall, and when the screw is installed, it forces the anchor to expand and creates a brace-like hold, which is the purpose of an anchor and why it can't be pulled straight out. Another way to remove the anchor is to recess it or push it back into the wall, allowing it to fall between the studs. Now that the anchor's been removed, you'll need to fill those small holes using a small amount of spackle and a spackle knife and let it fully dry. Then simply grab your orbital sander for a quick touch up to smooth that wall out. Now that we understand the ways to remove anchors, let's switch gears and better understand how to choose and install the anchor properly. Shopping for anchors can seem overwhelming because of the many different types and fancy names, but look at it this way. They're created to hold up a specific amount of weight and prevent anything you hang up not to come out of the wall. So read the package to better understand how much weight can it hold or what material is it made to secure into. When you're hanging any basic home decor, anything around 25 to 50 pounds, the most common anchors will be your self-drilling anchor or a plastic sleeve anchor. If you're preparing for any DIY projects in your home, you will certainly need a tape measure. And here are a few tricks that'll have you measuring up to those DIY professionals in no time. The measurement number on the back of the tape measure has a meaning. It'll tell you how wide this actual tape measure is. So if you're making any measurements where you can't quite get into the maybe two sides of the wall, this will allow you to know how much space is being held by that tape measure when you expand it. You'll notice in your tape measure that every 16 inches is marked red. And that's because in most standard US homes, your studs are running 16 inches. And what that does is it allows you to run your tape measure down an entire wall and simply make marks at every 16 inches quicker. In any project where you need to screw a faster into a piece of wood, you should understand what it means to have your materials split and how to prevent that. When you drive a screw into a piece of wood, the threads of the screw are attempting to grab onto the wood from the inside while burrowing downward into your material. As it's working through your material, it may encounter heavy force or pressure working against it causing the wood to split. It actually breaks under pressure. That pressure is caused by buildup of wood that doesn't have an escape route. It knows to get out of the way, but it also has nowhere to go. So it builds up and the wood splits. When you drill what's known as a pre-drill or pilot hole, you're giving the screw a clean path or escape route free of any excess material. And it's tips and tricks like these that become building blocks to continue growing as a DIYer. There's so much more to learn and we're excited to be with you every step of the way. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on this episode of The Beginner's Guide with 3OB. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and comment below what topics you'd like to see next. Check out our other beginner's content like our Tools 101 How to Use series, our beginner's guide, and much more when you subscribe today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.